Hey y'all, in this video we're going to go over some basic circle vocabulary. And starting off, of course, with the definition of a circle. And a circle is a set of all coplanar points that are a given distance from a given point. Now, the given point is the center of the circle, which I have labeled C, and that distance is the length of that line segment CD. Now, the shorthand way for circle C is to make a little circle with a dot in the center, and name it by its center, and we call this circle, in this case, circle C. Now, the radius is a segment from the center to a point on the edge of the circle. The length of the segment is also called the radius. So CD is a radius, and its measure is also a radius. So you have to remember or realize in a situation, do you need the line segment radius or the length radius? Similarly, diameter is a line segment containing the center, but it has endpoints on the circle. Uh, and the length of the segment is also called a diameter. So like radius, it has two meanings. Diameter is either the physical line segment or it's the length between the two endpoints. And so in this case, I have circle B and AC is a diameter of circle B. Now, of course, I can have congruent circles but two or more circles are congruent only if they have the same radius. So I have circles D and E, and their radiuses are marked, or radii are marked with two little tick marks each. That means circle D is congruent to circle E. And another type of circles are concentric circles. And these are two or more coplanar circles that share the same center. So all three of these circles share the center and therefore they are concentric because they are drawn in the same plane. Now, notice it says coplanar. If I get rid of the word coplanar on some of these things, circles turn into spheres, right? And these uh, circles here start to end up being in different planes. And uh, so those would not be concentric circles if it's not coplanar. Now let's talk about parts of circles. Specifically, we're going to look at the arc. The arc of a circle, or an arc of a circle, are two points on the circle and the continuous unbroken part of the circle between the two points. Those two points are called the endpoints of the arc. So I have a circle here, and I've drawn two endpoints, A and B, and I've drawn out separately arc AB. So the arc is just this piece of the circle here, okay? And it's written as arc AB with a capital A to B, or you can use the arc symbol, which is literally like a little arc over the two letters. Not a straight line segment, not flat. You need to have that curve along the top. Now, semicircles are arcs of a circle whose endpoints happen to be a diameter of the circle. So circle C here has two semicircles, which is why I need to use three letters to name a semicircle. I don't know if I mean the top half or the bottom half, so it's not enough to just say the endpoints and have semicircle AD. I need three points, so ABD would tell everyone that I am talking about the semicircle at the top half, and AED would be telling everybody I mean the semicircle on the bottom. So the way I name semicircles, I need three letters. The endpoints have to be on the end of the name, and the extra point on the arc that designates which part of the arc I'm looking at uh, has to be the middle letter, okay? So I need three points to identify a semicircle. All right, now a minor arc happens to be an arc that is smaller than a semicircle, and I only need two letters to name those. So in the first example I gave for just the definition of the arc of a circle, that arc AB was a minor arc only needs two letters. Now a major arc, by contrast, is an arc of a circle that is larger than a semicircle. And just like a semicircle, we need three letters for naming major arcs, okay? So three letters for major arcs, two letters for minor arcs, three letters for semicircles. That's the naming convention for arcs. Now, of course, an arc has a measure it actually has several ways to measure it. We specifically designate an arc measure to be just like an angle. 
and a full circle, its arc measure would be 360 degrees. Um, and so portions of arcs we measure by angles. And the specific angle we use is called a central angle. And a central angle is an angle with a vertex at the center of a circle and sides passing through the endpoints of an arc. So this arc AT is cut by angle ACT. And so if angle ACT has a measure of 60 degrees, that means the measure of arc AT, the minor arc, is also 60 degrees. So the central angle defines the measure of the arc. And of course, the major arc, ART, also has a measure, and its measure is the reflex of 60, which would be 300 degrees, because I have to have 360 degrees to go full circle. So the measure of ART is 300, the measure of arc AT is 60. So remember, the measure of the arc is the same as the measure of the central angle that cuts the arc. Okay, now when we get into circles, this is going to get a little bit more complicated because we don't just look at the measure of an arc. Later on, we're going to look at the length of an arc. But for right now, measure of an arc is the same as the measure of the central angle that cuts that arc. So now let's move on to the fancier circle vocabulary, the stuff that's most likely new to most people. Uh, the first word is chord, and a chord is any line segment whose endpoints lie on a circle. So AB is a chord, and CD is a chord. Now, once I have defined chord, I have alternate definitions for a diameter, because then a diameter becomes the longest chord of a circle, also known as the chord that goes through the center, or a chord that goes through the center. Now, notice I said segment, because if I extend these out, it actually has a different definition. So we'll talk about that with circles. Yay! Now, some people are familiar with this word, tangent. Uh, a tangent is a line that intersects uh, a curve exactly once, and in our case, the curve will be the circle. So circle F has a tangent at point G. So line one is tangent to circle F at point G. And G is called the point of tangency. And finally, with circles, I'm going to define two more words that are descriptors that don't only apply to circles. The first word is inscribed, which means inside or enclosed by a shape or solid. You're going to see a lot of these when we get to circles. Um, things like this. This angle, CAT, is an inscribed angle, so it is inside circle M. I can have polygons inscribed, so quadrilateral BART is inscribed in circle L, and then it doesn't have to be a circle. On the outside, I can have a triangle, DOG, and circle C is inscribed inside of triangle DOG. And of course, we have the alternative word, meaning outside or around, and that is circumscribed, so to enclose another shape or solid. So I can go back to these drawings, and I could say circle L, circumscribed, about quadrilateral BAT, ART, meaning the circle is outside, or I can say triangle dog is circumscribed about circle C.